you know the checks and balances are not working is because on the eligibility issue, only Tate and others are not having their cases heard. They're being thrown out. They're not being heard on the merits. Wait, hold on. On which issue, Gary? The eligibility of Obama. You've talked about it, but nobody on talk radio will talk about it every day. Oh, oh, you mean the issue of whether he's an American citizen or not. Okay, that is a big issue, but it's going nowhere. And what's the next one? You know, you've been doing so well. Don't use my show to push a website, please, Gary. I agree with you that's an important issue, but it's gone nowhere, and it's not the way to get at Obama, in my opinion. But please tell me how... Uh, you think this man can override the checks and balances in America? The, so do you know that the Supreme Court has been approached by a number of cases, with a number of cases, and they refuse to listen to them? Justices all over the country are the attorney. Gary, I know what you. I know what you're excited. I actually agree with you. I have reasonable doubt as to whether Obama is a U.S. citizen. I've read all of the data. But right now we're dealing with a man who is the president, irrespective of this issue. And the important thing to remember is he has already been set back on many fronts. He has been stopped many times by his political opponents, Gary. He's coming to understand that this is not Chicago, that the big world is different than Chicago. And he also, on the, you know, I got to bring up, you know, take a look at the ex-governor of Illinois. What was his name, Beowulf? I forgot already. The guy with the hair? Blagovich, okay? Blagovich was a man from the political milieu that Obama came from. One in the same political machines. And he got so drunk on his power in Chicago that he thought he was untouchable. Now, I want to remind you, we don't have Elliot Ness, but there are checks and balances. The biggest check and balance itself is the truth. And the former governor of Illinois is no more. He's gone. He overstepped his, his boundaries, and he brought himself down. He came down like Humpty Dumpty, didn't he? And I am telling you that Obama understands, because he's a lot smarter and he has better advisors, that he also can overstep his boundaries, which he's done with Chrysler. He's violated the U.S. Constitution with, with Chrysler. He has violated the U.S. Constitution with taking over banks. He's violated the U.S. Constitution with taking over financial uh, enterprises. He's violated the U.S. Constitution by, by uh, running the budget up like this, without checks and balances, and the financial world is fighting back. Very powerful, very wealthy people are coming to understand that Michael Savage, disc jockey, may be right. And for their own reasons, they're pushing back against Obama. But Obama's a survivor. He's very smart, very sensitive to criticism. And he understands that he's overstepped his boundaries with regard to the budget right now. And even he has now left his own party uh, to the left of him on this. He came out, I think, within the hour, saying, hmm, my budget is insupportable. I'm, I'm really worried about it. We can't do this. He's done a few other things that you've got to understand show that he's a, a real politic, a, a real politician. But I'm putting it to you that way, if you want to put it that Obama says debt load unsustainable, warns of skyrocketing interest rates. How did he finally figure that out? Anyone who knows that's, that's what happens, right? So he's coming to understand these things. But there's an even better article which should give you some hope as to the fact that absolute power corrupts absolutely and that this hum man Humpty Dumpty himself, you know, had a great fall. I am telling you that Obama is heading for a great fall if he doesn't rein in his own inclinations to, to try to push us too far too fast. I believe he pushed too far too fast and it has backfired on him in many ways. Now, you won't read that in your morning paper, but it's happening. The DHS report on white right-wing extremists, withdrawn. But the best article is by, the, by Jim, Jim Garrity on michaelsavage.com called The Alinsky Administration. Now, many of you know who Saul Alinsky is, and we know he was a far-left, uh, let us say, communist radical. He died in 1972 when Obama was 11 years old. But Obama's mentor studied at a school Alinsky founded, and they taught their students the philosophy and methods of community organization, meaning Castroism. But the fact of the matter is, since Obama took office, he's made a lot of mistakes. And every time he makes a mistake, the media covers for him. That we know, which is why he's getting away with it. But eventually, that is starting to crack. I mean, that is starting to crack. Some in the media are starting to speak out. Some of them are finding their courage. The fact of the matter is, 
Uh, Obama says he doesn't want the government to run car companies, but he's running car companies. He's fired CEOs. He demonized bondholders. He ensured the UAW gets the sweetest deal, which is in violation of the U.S. Constitution. He has overridden laws of bankruptcy to make sure the unions get paid off because they backed him. Obama says he doesn't want to run banks. But the stooge in the Treasury Department, the Cub Scout, Geithner, uh, will not take back some of the TARP funds that give them influence over bank policies. He's critical of Wall Street, but he signs up on the, the Cub Scout, Tim Geithner's remarkably generous plan to give hedge funds and private investors a low-risk, high-reward option on toxic assets. Why? Well, you've got to read Alinsky to understand this. Now, you've got to understand that the candidate, Obama, during his candidacy, threw inconvenient friends and his allies and supporters under the bus once they became political liabilities. You didn't know that. What's happening is he's doing it right now as the president. And that is because it's all about power, isn't it? It's really not about politics. At the end of the day, you have to understand that Hillary Clinton, who was once a radical herself, became somewhat moderate once, once Bill started to make a fortune. And there's nothing like money to leaven the bread. And thank God Bill Clinton got a taste of the good life, and he started to moderate his policies, didn't he, after he left office. He realized what it was like to fly on private jets as a private citizen. He realized what it was like to make such big money as a private citizen. And he started to get, under, he came to understand that he can't do this uh, as a radical. So Hillary moderated. Now moderates thought they were electing a moderate. Liberals thought they were electing a liberal. Both camps were wrong. I'll be right back. Hey, 